what else do we know about trends uh, and what uh, what we know about trends but uh, what we know about trend trending markets is that the uh, trending market will transition to non trending market and a non trending market will transition to a trending market so when we go back to those prior two months those prior two months before the month of May what do we have non trending markets and those non trending markets transition into a trending market that is what um, uh, so that is what um, I t to try to look for. I try to look for these non-trending trending markets, and sometimes it takes a while for it to turn into a trend. But when the month of May started, and we started to move away, move uh, outside of the trading range, it was a real good clue that this market had the potential to trend and trend uh, pretty far. That's what you as a trader have to do. Now, um, I have a confession to make, uh, and that is I personally – don't know how far uh, the trade will end up going in the direction of the uh, of the trade or the direction of the trend. Whenever I put a trade on, I don't know how far it will go. But what I do know is that if I define my risk and if I use the least amount of risk, that is, I don't uh, don't trade when event or liquidity risk is too high. My target is relatively easy hurdle uh, for me to reach, and uh, so. Uh, and so I look at trading from the standpoint of looking at risk first um, and then look to uh, see if the trend starts to develop, if this trend starts to move in my direction. And if I can anticipate uh, a trend from a non-trend, so the market's non-trend, I can anticipate a trend from a non-trend, what can I do? Then, then I can start to... Uh, 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 more likely to stay on that trend. But I really don't know how far the market is going to trend, how far it's going to go. But I do know that if I define my risk, if I limit my risk, you know, it's going to be a, my, my targets in this trend are going to be relatively easy hurdle to get over. Um, what I do also know that is if I focus on what I call borderline entry levels that are visual to many, and energy at that level area or slash area should make me wrong. Uh, uh, should it make me wrong, I'm going to lose a little or right, make me uh, make more than a little. So what I'm going to do in a non-trending market is look for levels where I can define my risk, where I can limit my risk, and that occurs at what I call borderline levels, levels where it's bullish above, bearish below. And if I can focus on those levels from technical tools like moving averages, trend lines, Fibonacci retracements, what I, I'll able to able to do is understand or know that an energy is likely to develop at that level. So either I'm going to be right or I'm going to be wrong. If I sell against a level that is a nice borderline level, I'm going to be right if the market starts to go, what, go lower. And I'm going to be wrong if the market goes above that trend line, above that level and I would expect that if it goes above that borderline level that the market has an energy to the upside just like I would expect that if the market has uh, goes below that level there's going to be an energy or stays below that level it's going to be the energy to the downside so I'd like to focus on the borderline levels and I like to define my risk and limit my risk and what I also know is that if I can anticipate a trend by using the clues from the tools using um, uh, you know things like moving averages, Fibonacci retracements, trend lines, oh, and and I can and I can understand that the mar market is in a non-trending type mode, like it was in April, like it was in March. That 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 eventually the market's going to trend like it has in May. And so if I see these non-trending type months, I can be better prepared to expect or an anticipate a trend and then if you anticipate something may happen and it actually starts to happen that changes your whole perception of how you're going to trade that trend doesn't it you if you think that the market is going to trend because it's non trending you are have a better chance to stay on that trend starts to move lower you stay on it. You don't get out, you know, with a 20 pip profit, a 50 pip profit, or maybe even a 75 or a 100 pip profit. Maybe you look for those opportunities to um, stay on the trend. Maybe you uh, 
uh, if you get out of your position because, let's say, you don't want to risk overnight, you look for those opportunities where the market corrects, and then you go with the uh, trend back in the direction of where it's going because you, you're anticipating a trend to happen. And a trend is not, you know, remember, a trend tends to be uh, larger than we think. And so that is what... Um, uh, so you have that idea that trends are fast, directional, have larger than you think, move in, in ranges larger than you think, and you start to think in terms of this market has 400 pips of trending in it, and that changes your whole perception of how you're going to trade and how you're going to trade the trends well. So um, I want to take a look at the euro versus U.S. dollar, and I want to I take a look at uh, it from a, this is a monthly chart here, and I want to go back to, or I want to look at what uh, is the average true range. Just ATR is short for average true range, and what do I do? I put in one as the average true range, and so when you put it put in one as the average true range, what does that uh, tell you down here in this graph? Well, it tells you that the average. Um, it tells you what the range is for each of these uh, specific months. So if you have the average true range one, it just tells you the range of that specific month. And that uh, I like to use and look at average ranges over uh, you know time periods to gauge the trending or non-trending uh, nature of the market. And I'm looking for those extremes where the market is non-trending typically. Why? Because non-trending markets transition into trending markets, right? And so you if you if you know that the average true range over a month's time period is very narrow on a historical basis, what can you expect might happen? Well, that it's going to not be narrow. Um going forward or for maybe a month or maybe even two months or maybe even extended. Remember, I don't know how far the market is going to trend. All I know is if I follow my my tools, if I define my risk, if I limit my risk, I have the chance for you know to get on this trend and for have the market move in a directional bias um to my favor. Um so and I could make a lot of money in a fast and directional market. So what did we have here in the month of uh March and April? This uh, down here is a flat line here where the, where the market ranges for those two months, this one and this one, was around 377 pips. You know, it's called 375 pips uh, uh, in, in from a low to high trading range for the month, uh, for those two months. And so if you, if you look at that in a historical context, and you start to go back and you look at, well, in one of the months in the month in 2011, this is uh, 2011 from here to here, we had a range that went down to 236, but that was only for one month. And so you can see that for all of 2011, every month had ranges much higher than 377 pips. In fact, most of the ranges were, you know, above this uh, 641 pips for a month. So that's so you know, that's interesting to know, you know, from a historical standpoint last year. And then you go back to 2010 and nothing got anywhere close to what our what it was our last uh the month of uh April, March and April ranges. The ranges were well above above the 375 pips weren't weren't it? It was you know like 500 pips was the uh, in fact, you know, maybe even 600 pips, uh, you know, somewhere between 500 and 600 was the low ranges for every month in 2010. And you go down to 2009, and we had one month that approached that 377. The rest of them were, again, well above the 370 that we had in the last two months. You go to 2008, same thing. You know, everything's above. In fact, look at this spike. We had a, a month's range at, you know, well, 20, 2,000 pips to the uh, uh, range. And But uh, if, if you go back to this area right here, we we have more of a a, a, um, a risk-defined area of, 
of ranges. You know, it, it's less volatile than this, these periods that we saw in recent times. So maybe this year is congruent with this type of area. But even so, during during this period, this period going all the way back to 2002, we had you know just one month here, one month there, no months in the month of uh, March. We had a, f a few little months here. See, you know, this was a more, more non-trending type year uh, going into 2007. And so, relatively speaking, what we're seeing, what we saw in the month of March and April, was historically very uh, non-volatile, non-trending type ranges um, or, or trending type markets, and also very narrow trading ranges, and that. That to me is you know the time where I want to get excited about the market to start to think toward the possibility of a trending market and see what happens and then then trade it that way 